Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 Update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 29th, 2020, recorded around 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm finally back, ready to go. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. First of all, taking a broad look at the tropics right now. For the most part, it is relatively quiet across the uh, tropical Atlantic with only a couple of tropical waves sprinkled in between. Uh, but we are starting to turn our attention towards the Caribbean. As I talked about a couple of days ago, this is going to be the area to watch. And now the Hurricane Center has started to pick up on that. What's happening is you can see this big trough uh, of low pressure digging in across the United States. we got a cold front right now stretching from near the Bay of Campeche all the way through northern Florida and all the way up into the northeast. This cold front is going to work its way southeastward over the next several days. And this piece is going to sweep over central Florida and stall out over south Florida from Lake Okeechobee, about from Lake Okeechobee. And then southward, uh, this was going, you know, this is going to basically stall out there. Um, so this is something to watch. Not only is it going to be a rainfall producer, this trough, but it's going to help also kind of spark the energy for a tropical cyclone to potentially develop down there in the Caribbean. Now, officially, the Hurricane Center has listed this area of disturbance not yet an invest at about 50% chance over the next five days. And that has consistently been going up with the last uh, several updates from the Hurricane Center. So this area from about Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula just to the west of Jamaica, this is going to be something to watch. And yes, it is something to watch even if you are in the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, uh, not really expecting any significant problems there but there could certainly be something again just as a reminder this is typically the time of the year that florida sees its worst impacts from major hurricanes beating september by a little margin so it's just something to be mindful of not saying that's going to happen but it's still the hurricane season that runs all the way through november 31st and i don't think you need me to tell you that y'all need to be watching especially given what's already happened this previous season so what's kind of going on, you can see this a stalled front that's or a semi-stalled front. Right now it's a cold front transitioning into a stalled uh, frontal boundary. Right now positioned over Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, northern Florida, and then up through the northeast United States with your trailing precip band behind it. This is basically going to be all uh, cold core convection as it is behind the front. So not expecting any significant severe weather to be kind of associated uh, with that. But again, there certainly could be uh, the chance that we start to see something develop down there in the Caribbean. Now you can kind of see where this front is located. This is actually a big cold front with the low pressure origin all the way up over Canada and you've got your trailing front all the way down into the Bay of Campeche and Mexico. So it is a very large front, and the southern tail end is going to just meander around here over the next several days, interacting with a tropical wave right now coming out of the Caribbean, this large, semi-large tropical wave that has been producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the last several days has been kind of generating that now moving off towards the west here, and this will start to interact with a higher moisture content, lower vertical wind shear, and we could start to see an area of low pressure form in this region and begin to take on tropical characteristics. But there's a large amount of uncertainty as to what actually happens down the road. If you look here on the GFS forecast, this is the 12Z model here we can see. Uh, our cold front right here, this is the 850 vorticity map that's been in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And this is our cold front stretching all through here. You have your trough of low pressure digging in across here. Now watch what happens over the next several days. We start to see this trough in this associated cold front kind of move across the Yucatan and in through this region down here into the, the uh, southwestern Caribbean. We start to get an area of vorticity that develops almost like a Central American gyre type that ends up developing. And the models have been hinting on this now for several days. So this does remain a very distinct possibility. Um, 
but it is just going to you know try to spin up into a little bit of a tropical cyclone and we have seen the models consolidate on that today especially the gfs now there is complicating factors especially how strong this ends up getting in the short term is going to dictate where this is eventually going to go in the long term if this is a stronger storm, once again, stronger storms get pulled northward, weaker storms go further west, and the GFS today has been indicating a weaker storm moving into the Yucatan crossing land and not really being much of a threat afterwards. Now, if we look here on the European forecast model, we see much of the same evolution that this piece of tropical wave energy coming out right now across the southern uh, Caribbean moves over and actually now starts to develop an area of vorticity but can't get really well organized and what we see is more so a larger gyre type setup uh, than anything else so it is going to be uh, very important uh, to watch the overall evolution of how this ends up developing now the gfs 200 millibar winds this is uh, again at 200 millibars in the atmosphere so high up there and we can see our trough of low pressure right now this is kind of the associated jet maximum in through here and that is our trough axis there now what we see is we start to see an area of relatively light flow but we do have some south uh, westernly or i'm sorry we do have actually in anticyclonic flow right now over uh, kind of the Gulf of Mexico, which is producing a little bit of vertical wind shear right now over the Caribbean. We're actually getting some northwest flow uh, that is kind of not allowing anything to kind of congeal. But if we move forward out in time, we start to see that the changes by hour 54, we start to see more of an anticyclonic pattern over the basically the southwestern Caribbean in the Yucatan and that's when we start to get something to develop right on kind of the leaning edge of that but this would be dealing with some shear coming out of the easterly direction if this was the case and then even if this does move further towards the north here into the Gulf of Mexico we're going to be talking about a high shear environment out here uh, which would really prohibit significant development and the story doesn't get much better if this moves over land and then back over the Gulf. Excuse me. We start to see more of that shear coming out of the south-southwesterly direction pulling around this front. So we're unlikely to see very substantial development. There is another big upper level tropical upper tropospheric trough right here. And that is creating shear. We have our own shear maker from the trough here. And then we have an anticyclonic flow over here, but our storm is not vertically aligned under it. So this really leaves a, a lot to be desired in terms of actual uh, substantial impacts. And I, I don't really think that we're going to see very high end impacts right now. Uh, but again, you know, rainfall in and itself can be a big problem. And if we go back real quickly to the GFS 700 to 400 millibar uh, relative humidity product here we can see that what starts to happen this is our front uh, coming through right here that's our front and we got our dry air kind of in training back behind it but we can see what happens is we kind of get this pinch where northern florida central and northern florida is basically dry as a bone and then south florida is you know under that moisture belt basically uh, stretching from the Caribbean. So there could be some heavy rainfall. That moisture surge remains for several days. I mean, we're talking all the way through, um, you know, October 5th or so. So for several days, almost five to six days more, we're going to be seeing kind of a moisture belt set up and that's going to pump in heavy rainfall amounts over South Florida. So even if there isn't a tropical cyclone near you, there certainly will be some peripheral impacts from this moisture belt. And this will stretch all the way up and maybe another area of low pressure trying to form. But this looks to be non-tropical in nature, as you can see the dry air getting wrapped around. So there's a lot to watch here over the next several days. Of course, we're going to have to keep our tabs on things. Uh, only real threat right now is this uh, area of interest at a 50% chance. 
The rest of the Atlantic Basin is dead quiet right now and it should remain that way for a little while longer. But again, this will be something to watch as time goes on. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.